Hey guys, I am back at Patriot Armory and Coatings, uh, spending a busy day in the shop. And now towards the end of the day, I'm going to do a viewer requested video. Uh, one person specifically requested this, but a lot of people have asked me the question. We say all the time, we talk about gear, we say it's Molly compatible, it's Alice, we throw around the words, Molly, what is Molly, what is Alice. We very rarely say the, the, the word, the acronym PALS, but PALS is very important to understanding Molly and stuff, but what is all this gear when we say it? What does it mean? So this video is going to break down what is, what is it when I say something is Molly compatible. And by the way, when I say something Molly is compatible, it's a bit of a misnomer. What I really mean is PALS compatible. So let's talk about Alice gear. Let's talk about Molly gear. Let's talk about the PALS system, which is redundant when you say system, but anyway, and how those all work. And we're going to be talking about U.S. military individual carrying equipment through the years a little bit as we go through this. So the first thing you need to understand is that Molly and Alice are not just girls' names. Molly and Alice are two specific load-carrying systems. There is no one piece of gear that is Molly or is Alice. So Molly actually stands for Modular Lightweight Load-Carrying Equipment. That was introduced around 1997, didn't get really popular and really ride widespread throughout the uh, military uh, until about the early 2000s. There was kind of a transition period between Alice and Molly, Alice came before it, um, where you started to see sort of um, a hybrid between the two, um, and Molly now has, has kind of taken over. Molly is based on the PALS system, which again to say system is stupid because PALS actually stands for the Pouch Attachment Ladder System. That's that system of nylon webbing you see on modern gear. Um, so yeah, I have a plate carrier with the modern PALS slash Molly compatible um, that we're going to look at. I have a bunch of Alice equipment. I have some, again, Molly compatible, but really we're talking about PALS compatible pouches and stuff. We're going to look at it all and how it goes together. Alice is the generation when I first came in the military, that's what everything was all-purpose, lightweight, individual carrying equipment. I swear, I think the military says, here's the acronym, here's the word we want to use, now find us an acronym that fits it. Alice was in use for a long time. Um, and Alice took over from the uh, M1956 series, which basically was, was just like Alice, uses the same attachment um, clips. But the big difference was the M1956 series stuff was all canvas. Alice switched to nylon, but a lot of the same pieces, like I said, the same attachment clips. Um, before that, there was, uh, you know, another version, and, and, you know, it all goes back to way back when, the M1910 series, which was the first sort of U.S. military quick on, quick off, relatively speaking, which used the wire attachment. We talked about this uh, in a battle box unboxing, which was the jungle survival one where I had mentioned that they used this pouch back in World War II, and a lot of people said, no, that's a Vietnam thing. No, actually, this is the wire attachment from the M1910 system. The wire hanger stuff has been in service forever and ever and ever, and was only really phased out when they started to introduce the uh, M1956, which was going into the Vietnam era. But there was still tons of equipment that, that still used this. So the M1956 into the Alice era still had provisions for using this stuff because it was, you know, in the inventory in mass amounts. We'll see that as we look at stuff. But anyway, let's talk about Alice first. Because um, both Molly and Alice, and like I said, it's not, um, it's not in everything. It's not all the equipment in the military. It is a series of equipment that's supposed to be used together. Remember, MOLLE stands for modular, right? So it is modular stuff that goes together um, as basically a, a complete issue to a soldier. Alice was very similar. Alice involved a, the lightweight um, setup, the what we called your LBE, your load-bearing equipment, your LCE, load-carrying equipment. When I was in, we called it TA-50. We called it your web gear. Um, it was the actual stuff that you wore as a soldier that you carried into battle, um, so your canteens, your ammunition, uh, your pistol belt that carried all the stuff, your suspenders, and, and a few other things. And then there was an Alice pack. It was the big rucksack, okay, and with a metal frame. Now, I don't have one of those. It's pretty old now. Uh, but it had, uh, I'll show you a picture. Okay, it had a, a big frame. Um, 
it didn't have a lot of individual compartments though. Atlas is still usable gear, and a lot of militaries and paramilitary forces around the world use it. It's just, I'm gonna show you why Molly using the PALS system is a little bit easier and more efficient. So, to start with, and this is, not, I had to order a new one. Uh, those of you who are actual veterans will recognize an OD green plastic clip. This is not a real one. The real ones uh, originally had uh, this really weird OD green plastic buckle thing that it was kind of, but then I started issuing a, a black quick release buckle um, and all the hardware was in black. These grommets here are left over from the M1910 series. This is where you would put all your pouches and everything into your belt. And you can see how once you put it on here, it's almost, it's not that hard, but it's not something that you're going to want to quickly change around with feet. But one of the longest standing items was like the old leather uh, 1911 45 holster. That served well into the 80s with the wire hanger system hanging off the pistol belt like this. Now because it relied on the spacing of the grommets and everything, it was not very customizable for the soldier. Um, you had to kind of put it where it was and notice this doesn't go anywhere besides on a belt. So these things went away uh, with the M1956 series. Those went away in favor of what would come to be known as Atlas clips because the Atlas equipment was the series that used it for the longest. But they're actually known as slide keepers. These things, goddamn no. These are what hold your gear onto your belt in the Alice series. And there are also specific webbing attachment points on the Alice pack where you can slide your things on. Now this came on, this is an ammunition pouch. So this holds, and this is an old one of mine. There would be spacers in here. You would hold three magazines. Standard 30 round magazine for the M16. You'd hold three in here and there were spacers. Everybody just cut those spacers out because they didn't really do much for you. You'd also hold two standard uh, fragmentation grenades in each pouch. So everybody would be issued two of these pouches. So you stride into battle carrying six magazines, four grenades. These would clip onto your belt and this over here would give you an attachment point for your suspenders or you could clip the suspenders onto here. We'll look at the suspenders in a minute. You also have standard two canteens, two one-quart canteens that have the same thing. They clip on uh, an entrenching tool, the E-tool, had a nice hard plastic cover. Um, what else could go on? It's a butt pack, it's like a little, little fanny pack you put on, you carry essentials in there. Uh, you could strap a poncho to the back of it, but basically everything that a grunt would need on their feet in an assault, um, sleeping in a big whack for overnight uh, if they couldn't get back to their supplies to their actual rucksack to all their heavy equipment that's what will go on this suspenders would be worn like so and they would be attached to the belt or to the gear to help distribute the weight uh, the older system had an h-back suspenders the newer one has a y-back suspenders if these are the goddamn devil these are the antichrist itself these things, if anything was going to break, if there was going to be a point of failure on your Alice, it was going to be your slide keepers, it was going to be these little hooks. These things get loose all the time. And if this is the only thing holding your suspenders to your belt, then you're just, everything's going to come apart. So I don't know, I don't know if I've ever seen anybody who's spent any time in the military, you know, with their own Alice gear. And a lot of guys, because you had to turn this stuff in, would go buy their own. It's not that expensive. Um, to have, you know, stuff to use and abuse out in the field, and then the stuff they were issued, they just turned back in in pristine condition, but these were always fastened on with duct tape, because they never, they always just lost the seal. And a lot of the, these clips would be tied shut with like 550 cord or duct tape shut, because they just come loose all the time. Um, you know, they just, they slide open, slide it over your belt and they're supposed to hold shut but you can see even this one just it just moves so if like you're trucking and running around the woods and it just comes loose and all of a sudden uh, you know it can your belt can fly off of it or it's it's not a very secure way to fasten it a lot of times since you wear the same gear over and over and over uh, me and i've seen a bunch of other people too would replace these with zip ties because there's not a lot of call for having to rearrange your gear over and over and over so you lose a few ounces of weight by getting rid of these slider clips, and zip ties aren't going to break them. But these guys, these little hooks, 
could either clip on to the top of your ammunition pouch, like so, or clip on to the top grommet of your belt. And then on the back, there was two more that once again could either uh, clip on to the grommets or a butt pack or whatever was the rearmost part of your gear. Again, to balance all your gear. A good old compass pouch slash first aid pouch. So everybody had some of these. Oh, here comes the rain. We need that rain. It's humid as hell. Up on here, people were talking about a, uh, a battle box and a club tack, doubting that this is a real military issue flashlight. We all have these things. And the suspenders have these cool little metal rings. Well, you'd actually probably have it clipped onto your non-shooting side. And then you'd take whatever and secure that down so it wouldn't flip any flop while you're running. But then you have a light that faces forward with you. You take your individual first aid dressing, put it right up here. That way, if you ever got hurt, you can pull it down there. Or when you're lying on the ground, your battle buddy walks up, grabs your dressing, and you're good to go, but you can still shoot. And this was TA-50, your uh, Alice gear. And so when we say Alice gear, now you have a sense. And here's some pictures of yours truly wearing Alice gear. And there was like a standard Alice setup. But, you know, because of some of the problems with Alice gear, it lacked some of the ability to be fully customized. Um, and because of some of the problems with the, the metal gear, that's where Molly came up after. And that's why we switched to Molly. Now, here's another picture. You look at this one, and this is me again. That's me wearing an early issue tactical vest. That was kind of the transition point between Alice gear and Molly gear. That was when they started building the, some of the pouches directly into the vest, but then on the back, you had some of the first PALS webbing built in. Now, PALS, really simply, is horizontal webbing, one inch wide, and there's mil spec, you know, how big it is and everything. And that allows you to attach other stuff to it. And this right here is a great example. So, PALS is set up so that the horizontal strips match up, and you basically weave a connecting strip in between the horizontal strips. So the strips match up, and if this is gonna to connect to my vest, you know, you just weave this in and out of vest strip, pouch strip, vest strip, pouch strip, whatever, and connect them. And it is not fully customizable because you're still slaved to where these strips are, but you have a lot more freedom to position things than you did with the Alps. And that's when we started seeing, rather than, ah, uh, that's a good rain. <clears throat> with the introduction of Molly, though, which is really the introduction of PALS, okay, so remember, Molly is a specific collection of modular pieces. PALS is the webbing system that makes it all possible. So with the introduction of PALS, which the Molly system is based on, that's when we saw a shift to say, we no longer need a specific load-carrying setup. We can put the load-carrying onto the actual body armor that troops have to wear anyway. And when I was, again, in the Army younger, we had flak vests. We did not have full body armor vests. We didn't wear hard trauma plates. We just, it wasn't a thing that we had to do. Uh, we would wear fragmentation armor. We would wear armor that would protect us against grenade fragments and explosive fragments, part of the personal armor system, comma, ground troops which was the Kevlar helmet, which was the, the vest that was, you know, it was not bulletproof. It was not supposed to be. Uh, and it was kind of lessons learned in Operation Desert Storm leading up into Operation Enduring Freedom, Iraqi Family Dollar. Like, it was not common for individual soldiers to wear body armor to that point. We just, we didn't do it until fairly recently. And Natick Research Lab, by the way, an army agency, developed all this stuff, uh, and then basically gave the contract to individual companies and said, hey, we've got this great invention. Now we want to buy it from you. Make it. I don't know what's up with the arm. But anyway, so the PALS system said, anyway, anyway, so PALS, the webbing, was able to be thrown on stuff like 
your body armor plate carrier directly. So you no longer needed a belt and suspenders to carry all your pouches, because now you have your body armor that you have to wear anyway, might as well just throw all your pouches directly onto it. In situations where you don't have to like wear the massive weight of ceramic trauma plates, they have what they just call a chest ring, which is basically just a lightweight PALS setup. It's just a nylon shell that's covered in PALS webbing that you can connect all these same pouches to and all the same gear. So where we're at now, when we talk about Molly, and this is why I said people really, they throw the term Molly around way too much, because Molly only covers, it's almost like, think about like a proprietary term. It's like calling anything that's cola Coke, right? Uh, Coke is a product line. Cola is a type of soda, right? Molly is a specific line of equipment. So things might be compatible with Molly, but they're not Molly webbing. They're not compatible with the Molly itself. They're compatible with the PALS webbing that Molly uses to go together. So we see stuff like this is the sheath to a, a Topps buck rescue knife. It says Molly compatible. What they really mean is it's PALS compatible. It gives you the webbing to attach to the PALS webbing so that you can wear it with the equipment that is the Molly equipment that is standard issue to most service members in the United States military. Note that not every single service member wears Molly equipment. It's just the prevalent issued stuff. Now this is my personal plate carrier. Um, I, you know, had a military issued interceptor body armor vest um, and the new, you know, advanced whatever. I can't remember all the names for all the stuff they issued me. But this is the one that I chose for some other stuff. There are some very few occasions where you are allowed to choose and use your own gear. Sometimes you can get reimbursed for it. These magazine pouches are all sold as Molly compatible. They're, they're PALS. They are PALS compatible. Uh, lots of different equipment goes on to the PALS webbing. You'll see that it's got the webbing on the front the back and I don't have the side armor plates but even where the side armor goes you can put the webbing there so you've got basically 360 degrees of coverage for where you want to put your stuff just like you would have with Alice with your belt but you're not limited to just that area on the belt anymore. Now I neglected to show you a picture of the actual full Molly setup so let me put that in. see it comes with you know your actual like uh, a vest attack vest to carry stuff it comes with a uh, full pack and you know you can split that up there's also um, in the early days you know before Molly was Molly we used to be issued the CFP 90 pack which was again it was like the days where we got the first tag vest issue uh, but it had the early stages of PALS webbing all over it so you can attach more gear. and I should say too that it's you know if you wanted to Alice is compatible with PALS. PALS, eh, here and there can work on Alice. You could strap this onto an Alice belt, but it's not gonna hold very securely. It's gonna flop all around. Whereas you could put these speed clips onto PALS webbing and it will hold fairly securely because you can control exactly how many pieces of webbing you go through. The belt is a standard width. You know, it's either gonna fit securely or it's not. If you wanna jump down the rabbit hole and get into the entire world of U.S. individual carrying equipment and all the stuff that U.S. forces carry between all the services and like, you're gonna be doing this for days. Cause there is the big picture, like let's just say like U.S. Army, um, stuff that is standard issue to the Army, but for a deployment, a unit will get unit funds. If a unit commander knows that a unit has a specific mission in a certain region, they get money to spend on stuff that they wanna buy and issue their troops just for that deployment too. So sometimes you'll see guys with very non-standard stuff, stuff that only one unit has because it's bought with those unit funds only. So when we talk about what is military issue, you'll see some wild stuff that people are carrying, but yes, technically it's not 
like it, it's not from a military warehouse somewhere, but it is issued to them by the U.S. military. So you know, it can the topic of what is military issued gear can be this big. I mean, it, it can go on and on and on. But there is there is a standard. What is Alice? What is Molly? And I hope we've sort of answered that a little bit, and you guys have a little better understanding. So that in other unboxings or looking at gear, looking at different pieces of equipment, when we say Molly, Alice, Pals, and the compatibility stuff. For those of you who don't have the experience or just didn't know before, now you know, and that we've answered that appropriately. And hopefully this was a slightly entertaining and informative video. So anyway, guys, um, this originally came as a question of the month, but I, I knew it was going to need its own video to, to really hash it out. So I didn't do a, um, a Q&A video for April because I just forgot to kind of keep putting it out there for questions. So I didn't have enough questions. I'm going to combine it with May. If you have a question that you want to ask for the May slash April Q&A video, send it to questionsfordocp at gmail.com. I also have that email address in the video description so you can check it out. I don't trust Wikipedia for much, but um, I, I just did a quick scan, you know, to see what they said about this kind of gear and everything, and they're at about a 95% no bullshit solution. So if you're interested in reading more about, you know, kind of U.S. military gear through the years, I'll give you links to those Wikipedia entries as well uh, in the video so you can click and you know you can follow the rabbit hole through clicking different things and, and see more about it there. Also um, link to the Facebook page if you want to get in touch with me um, besides asking for you know Q&A question um, best way to do it is send me a message through the Facebook page and don't forget Patreon always looking for uh, new members build up the Patreon team you'll find a link to that in the video description so you can check out all of that and a link to the Patriot Armory and Coding's webpage too. We've got some new stuff called Gun Candy. We've got some cool stuff going on, so check out that page. You're all absolutely awesome. I appreciate every single one of you, and I'll be back again real soon.